So today I have a book review video for you of seven books instead of six. So let's get started. So the first book is called, I just finished this today, it's called The Book of the Book of Hours, A Crumbling English Manor Slowly Gives Up Its Secrets by T. Davis Bunn. And my mom got this for me at a book sale. It was at a library. This is what it looks like. Now, this book was kind of okay. It was about this old English manor that this guy inherited from his wife's aunt because his wife, his aunt died, her aunt died, and then she died, so he inherited it. And when he gets there, he needs to pay, like, um, an inheritance tax, but they call it something different over in England. And he doesn't have enough money for it. It's like six, six thousand something pounds, I forget. And it equivalent, it's like a million dollars here or something, I don't know. And he finds this doctor woman who helps him. And throughout the book, they find these different clues that his wife's aunt, um left for him to find these different different compartments and different chambers in the house so that he can find something that can help him pay the inheritance tax so he can keep the manor. And the Book of Hours is it's what it's it's kind of like it's something that they find at the end of the end of the book and they explain it and stuff like what the Book of Hours is. I don't want to really get into it because I'm not really into, like, the... It's, like, a religious thing. I don't want to get it, like... I don't want to get it, um... Like, co like confusing or anything. Or I don't want to get it, like, wrong. Because I don't really know if it's a real thing. Or if it is or not in real life. I don't know. But anyway... That's what that book was about. It was boring in the beginning. But it got better towards the end. Like, the very end of the book. So I have two of these books, um, they're by the same author, Janet Evanich. I don't know how you say her last name, I always like to say it like that. This is called, um, oh this is what it looks like. And this is called Naughty Neighbor, and it's about these two people, one woman, one man, who live in like a row home or something, I forget. And it's where she lives on the bottom floor, he, li he lives on, he lives on the top floor, and they don't get along or anything, but then they come together when she gets fired from her job, and she has to go find a pig, because this pig was running around the Senate, which is where she works, she works for a senator, she's like the, a senator's aide or something, and they have to go find this pig that she thinks the, the senator that fired her took. And it's just, it's just really funny, to be honest. It really is. So this is called, this is this is by the same woman. It's called Smitten. And this is what it looks like. And this is somehow a woman who's a single mom. And she is like, she's a single mom. All she did when she was married was be a homemaker. And now since she's a single mom, she doesn't know what to do, and her degree in history isn't helping her in anything. So she decides she's going to be a carpenter, so she goes to this guy and asks for a carpenter job. And he gives it to her, but she does like the simple things like paint or something like that. And basically she wants to be a, a, she wants to learn to be a comp or comp carpenter. Because her house is like an old Victorian house, and it's falling apart at the seams, and it's almost condemned, so she has to figure out how to do these things so that she can do it herself and not waste the money on hiring somebody to do it for her. And then there's this, in this, um, the middle of the book, there's this flasher guy who comes around. He wears like a bagged a paper bag mask with two holes cut out, and he goes around the um, the place naked, and the guy who, um, is the guy, the contractor guy, the head contractor guy that gives her the job, they start a romance together, so they decide to pretend to be married in case the flasher comes back. Well, he keeps coming back, and there's instances where they think they find him, and that it really was some other person, but they finally catch the person in the end, and it's all from her ex-husband. So yeah, it's a really 
that one I feel is like the weirdest one I read because of all the people that were accused of being the flasher because of the ways that they were like doing different things. It's just really weird. So this one is um, simple um, to talk about. It's called U.S. History 101, Historical Events, Key People, Important Locations, and More, A Crash Course in American History. It's by Kathleen Sears, and this is what it looks like. It's a small little book, and I would suggest if you are in school, college, high school, whatever, even elementary, you could read this book because it has everything, and it's, it's an up-to-date book. It goes from the Native American, no, it comes from, like, the first people that came to the Americas, um, with this land bridge called Beringia or something, but it goes from that to the Native Americans who were here, all the different, um, tribes, it talks about that, and then it goes all the way to Obama, so if you, so it's kind of a current history, I think it goes all the way up to the Boston marathon bombing that's as far as it goes up to so it's a really current history book yeah kind of but it was really good and there's there's like different pictures and there's stuff in here that like it's divided into chapters so you won't get like lost there's all these different things there's even things in here that you might not even know about um during the Revolutionary War and the uh, Civil War, they go through all the different kinds of battles and stuff. It's a really good informative book, and it's not filled with, like, big words or anything like that, so anybody could follow it. So, you should go check that out. Now, that book, I got this one at a book sale, and but it was the one I took the sticker off, it was found at Ollie, so maybe it's still there at Ollie's, I don't know. This book I really didn't get, and I got this at a flea market. It was where this lady, she has, like, um, she sells books there, and she started doing, like, bags of books with, like, different, um, different, it was, like, a bag of books for $20 and had the same genre, but they were all different things, all different authors and stuff. And this is was Halloween 3, so if you don't know what Halloween is about, um, I mean, it's been on about technically the holiday. It's about this guy, um, the Halloween franchise about Mike Myers, and he comes during Halloween and goes back to his old house to kill people and stuff. And this is the third one. It's called The Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, The Night That No One Comes Home. And this is what it looks like. Now, I have to tell you, I am not a really big Halloween girl, Mike Myers girl. I like um, the Friday the 13th ones the best. And I really don't like the Halloween ones. I mean, I, I like the first two, but I never really seen the third one. So I never really see the third one or whatever other ones come after that. I've seen another one, but not this one. So this whole book, I thought, oh, Mike Myers was going to show up. He never did. So, I don't know if it's because I wasn't into the Halloween franchise. Um, I mean, I like Halloween the holiday, but the franchise, the movies, are they're just okay. Like, they're, I like, I like the Jamie, when Jamie Lee Curtis was in them, I liked them. She was in three of them. But this one, it wasn't good. I really didn't like it. And it wasn't, like, and I don't know if it was, it was like the movie, because I never seen this one, the third one, so... I don't know. I just really didn't like it. So this is um, the V.C. Andrews book. I'm not reading them. It's a, it's a series, but I'm not reading them, like, all together. I'm just going to spread them out because sometimes with V.C. Andrews books, I read so many of them that I really don't want to read them, like, all together anymore. So I'm going to spread them out. And this is the third, the third book in the Hudson series. It's by V.C. Andrews, Eye of the Storm. This is what it looks like. So what it basically basically is about is about it takes place after the second book. And in the second book it was Rain decides to go back to she was in England at this um school for like arts, like for music for music, acting, singing, stuff like that. And she finds out her grandmother died. 
and she ends up going back home where her grandmother left her all this stuff in her will. And nobody knows that she's really related to them because nobody knows that she's related to them except for the grandmother and a few of the people that helped um, in her grandmother's house. So her Aunt Victoria decides she doesn't want that to happen because people don't want her because people don't know about her because they come from such a rich family that they don't want a scandal to come out. So people think that people people were thinking that she was just getting this stuff because her grandmother felt sorry for her being like a charity case or something like that. So what happens is is with a tragic accident she becomes paralyzed and she has to um go around in a wheelchair and during this time her aunt Victoria takes care of her and it's really bad and then for some reason her aunt Victoria gets crazy and she finally um escapes the house Rain escapes the house with her husband and she finds out she's pregnant and that's how the book ends so it's a really good book I really liked it it was better than the first two books if I'm being honest but I really enjoyed it I just like how, like, the third, like, with her books, it's always, like, it's kind of like a horror thriller thing, but it's kind of different compared to, like, the Halloween one I just showed you and Stephen King ones. It's just, like, an upgraded version of, like, a Stephen King book. It's, like, really, really weird. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, Stephen King books are good, but the older ones are really good, but... These the VC Andrews ones. This one was written in 2002, and it still has weird things happen in it. Like weird, weird things happen to it. It's they're like really good books. And usually the third one has like the weirdest things in it. So this one I got at a book sale too. It's called Encyclopedia Horrifica. It's the terrifying truth about vampires, ghosts, monsters, and more by Joshua G. This is what it looks like. The thing is like holographic. The cover. So what this book is basically about is about an encyclopedia, a little encyclopedia of different um, things. Like they talk about um, the vampire, talk about Dracula, and they talk about the real Dracula versus the real Count Dracula and the, 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 and the film slash book one. Um, they talk about ghosts, they even, there's like a little investigation things in the book, all throughout the book, and the one was about ghosts and how this guy, the guy, Joshua G, went on a ghost hunt. Um, it was sort of like, um, Ripley's Believe It or Not, kind of a little bit, but not, like, to that extent, basically. So yeah, it was a really good book, I really liked it, there were some things in there that were really creepy in it. So, if you're really scared of things, I don't suggest you read it, or if you get nightmares over reading scary things, or see scary pictures or something, then do not read this book. I mean, I liked it, because I liked the horror kind of stuff, but it was really good. So, comment below and tell me some of your books that you liked for this month. Please subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.